Why are you sitting like that, Turbo? I mean, you don't have to be perky in all your episodes. I, you know? But I am perky. But you don't have to be, is what I'm saying. What's up, guys? It's the morning. Welcome right back now. to the channel. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. No. Cut. Welcome back. Jeez. Hmm. Welcome back. Uh, what? Welcome back. Today, I have somehow managed to convince Chris to teach me something else I've never done before. Brakes. And we're doing them on my dear friend Hannah's Jeep. This is a 2000 six Jeep Liberty and she took it to the shop for inspection and they told her that she needs rear brakes. They also told her that she needed uh, one of those little lug nut remover doodads because hers was worn out. Chris says he has a tool for that, right? Yeah, I should, we should be able to get it off, yeah. Awesome. Gus man's here to help. The plan is Chris is going to teach me how to do one side first and then I am going to tackle the other. Things are starting to look pretty organized in here. I know Chris is happy as a clam. He's got his lift installed. He's starting to get all his shelving up. Everything is coming along nicely. Cats and dogs. Get him, Turbo. Get him. Hannah's lug nut key, uh, they recommended she get a new one because it is not usable. He said, No one gonna steal these tires. Jeez, this is really on there. It broke the lug nut in half. Wow. Now what? Well, now we get this off of here. And we contemplate why we chose the life of working on cars. <laughs> coming off in bits and pieces. And just give for reference to show how so how tight somebody has made these lug nuts. I mean, look at, look at this. I'll take one of these other ones off. That's how tight the lug nuts are on this stupid. So that's, that means that's why the tool got stripped out because somebody whacked them on full blast with a gun. I mean, of course, the rest of them I'll just hit with the impact gun, but that was just to demonstrate how indeed tight. I, I was worried we were going to break this. Yeah, yeah, it was bending. I'm surprised that, what is that, a snap-on? Snap-on, yeah. <laughs> Very tough. 
But if you see the other ones, we could just whack off with the gun. Well, maybe. So. Easy work with a gun, huh? Hey. Now you might say, why don't we just use a gun on there? And the answer is... As you hit it, I'm going to apply torque. I didn't do nothing. No, you didn't. That was already there. Oh. There's nothing there. I didn't do nothing. Did I? Did you do that? No. No, you didn't. No. Oh, God. Okay. Well, not only was it probably over torqued, there was quite a bit of corrosion in the threads. <laughs> Adjuster's completely rusted up inside of there. I'm sure he'll still be doing that. The brakes are fine. It doesn't need brakes. Really? Yeah, you want me to pull the other side off? Wow. I mean, they don't need to be replaced right now. They're at like six, six or seven, 30 seconds. Okay, this side, yeah, this side needs to be replaced. So originally Jen wanted to do the one side and I do the other, but I'm telling her we should probably take both sides off to make sure the calipers are good because this side's down to 330 seconds, that side's at like six or seven. Usually that might mean a stuck pin or a uh, tight piston in the caliper. So what are you looking at that indicates that you need brakes or don't? It's the, the brake pad lining in there. Kind of, you wouldn't really be able to see it much with that camera, probably. All right, first thing we want to do is push this caliper piston in. You see this boot here? That's a dust boot. It's not torn or anything so far from what we can see. Now, I went ahead and checked the fluid level in the, the reservoir up there, and it's enough to just push this back, and it would push the old fluid back into the reservoir. But instead of doing that, it's a good idea to take this 10 millimeter and crack the, the bleeder loose, unless it's rusted solid, you don't want to break it off and stick this hose on here uh, with a little bottle attached to it. See, if we're replacing the rotor, I would just hammer the screwdriver in between the brake pad and the rotor, but I don't know if we are or not. I mean, they honestly don't need to be replaced, so. But we'll just go like this, and now you're gonna see fluid will start coming out of here. Provided this piston's not seized up or anything, and the pins aren't seized up, this will compress, and it is. And the fluid will start to come out. This hose off. And actually, you know what's funny about us putting that on there? I think this bleed nipple was, uh, nothing came out of there. It must be clogged in there with rust. So it pushed its way back up to the master cylinder reservoir up there anyway, which is fine. Everybody does it that way. All right, so now I'm going to remove the, the caliper pin bolts. So I'll start on the lower one. Hose or nothing to pinch the hose. And there's a the look. Yeah, the caliper's actually pretty nice shape. Boot's not torn. Now, I'm gonna tuck this right here. You wanna hang this, uh, you don't wanna hang it by the hose like that. So, brake pads, shims. And see, this side has about, you know, 7.30, 6, 6.30 seconds, we'll call it. Still plenty of life on those. Are you looking at like the thickness of, of that part? Yeah, that's right the there? friction material. That's what presses 
against the, the rotor. So when you apply your brakes, it's uh, sending, you know, this is a little piston that comes out and pushes major force, like thousands of pounds of force, squeezing these together, these two together, squeezing them real hard against your brake rotor and that's what gives you friction to stop. But when you get down to the steel and you start feeling the grinding, that steel running against steel is metal oh, on metal. and metal. it gets down to this part. The backing plate, yeah, or whatever. Next thing is these caliper pins. You wanna make sure that they, the boots aren't torn and that uh, they go in and out real good. We'll take those out and put a little grease. So it, it's not a bad idea. It's a good idea to take this, these out, clean all the old grease off, which we'll do, and then put uh, new grease on there. But now we're going to take this, this bracket off because we're going to want to clean these, these out real good. They've got a lot of rust in here. And you see what happens. There's lots of talking in this video. Trying to teach Jen some stuff though. Oh, this has got the... So when your brakes get down real low and you hear that squealing, that's, this is the little squealer tab. That's designed oh. to, to hit the rotor and let you know, hey. People but uh, you see, if you didn't have those shims in there every time, these little stainless steel shims, every time you stop the brake pad, you'd hear it rocking back in here and it'd be pretty loud. Um, but with that stainless shim in there, you see how it's really rusted here? in here? The salt gets down on this cast iron bracket and creates rust jacking, we'll call it, underneath this stainless. This is stainless steel shim. So this won't rust, well, won't rust much, but when the rust gets under it, it pushes it up and that'll lock the pad from being able to slide back and forth. You see, when you release your brakes, this, the pad needs to be able to come back and release. But if this gets rust jacked under there and then you press the brakes, it'll get locked against your rotor and that's probably why the other side has honey, uh, is more worn. The pads are sticking either due to a, a tight piston or rust jacking between the pads. That's a little piston that pops out? Yes. Like in Yeah, the... if you press the brake pedal right now, this will come out. Oh. That's how that works. All right, so now we can take this brake. No idea. These can be pretty tight on here. On the caliper bracket bolts. We'll put some Loctite on these when we put them on too. A lot of them, a lot of time they have Loctite from the factory. So see where the pads ride? We're going to take a grinder to this and or wire wheel and clean it up real good. So this is called the... The caliper? Caliper, and that's the caliper bracket? Yeah. And where's the rotor? This is the rotor. Now there is a... This whole thing here is... The brake rotor, and there's a drum brake inside of it, which... You know, we're not gonna mess with that for now. We'll just do a brake pad slap on this. These, these are fine. Plenty of life in these. Well, over on the other side, before we run to the parts store and get pads, we'll make sure this caliper is good too. So again, I'm, all right, this one, you see it is leaking fluid out. The other one must have just had some crud in there. It was blocking it. But now, when I push this piston in, it's gonna go much, much easier as long as the pins are, are loose. Well, not seized, should I say. See, it's going. Yeah. And see how fluid's coming out of there? So instead of pushing that old fluid back up to the master cylinder up top, we're uh, pushing it out at the port and back. Close your port, that stops draining. You don't want uh, air getting in, but of course, air, air is never really gonna get in here. Uh, it's, it's because the fluid's pushing its way out, so. These pins are good, like, the boot's good, the piston pushed in. Uh, let's go get some brake pads. We don't need calipers. On the way to the parts store, in my piece of a bulk item a piece of honda my little girl she has a new quirk and it's not a good one we got transmission problems sometimes third gear sticks a little you gotta give it a little wiggle every time it shifts into second it's got a stumble and third 
if my foot is on the gas, it just makes a vroom sound. Like it's, it's, I'm accelerating, but nothing's happening. It's almost been training me for manual because now every time it goes to second, I take my foot off the gas and just let it do its thing. And when I can feel it's going to third, you know what, I'm just gonna, well, it's still school zone, so we'll go 20, but when I can pick up some speed, I'll show you. All right, here we go, listen. Did you hear that? No? It's time for a new car. I'm gonna be rocking the Torino pretty soon, I know it. Not that that's a bad thing, but it is a boat to drive. All right, well, anyway, um, I asked Chris, do I need to ask the guys at the parts store for rear brake pads? He said, well, yeah, of course, obviously. And I said, obviously, it's not obvious to me. There's no front and rear tires, but there probably are. But I mean, not for my car, there's not. So yeah, the things that you don't know that are obvious to everyone else uh, that does it for a living. Oops, I just looked at Hannah's paperwork. It's actually a 2008 Jeep Liberty Limited. So I'm glad I checked that before I got the parts. Maybe they would be the same, but maybe not. Wrong door. <laughs> Always. Got the brake pads. I was faced with a choice. There were three options. I didn't know which ones to pick. Uh, I got the middle grade. These don't happen to say rear anywhere on them that I can see. Maybe it matters on some cars. Maybe not. And now that I'm seeing it with my own two eyes, for someone who doesn't know about brakes, now I can clearly see that the used brake pad on the right is significantly thinner than the one on the new one on the left. Um, but I guess if you're not a mechanic, you wouldn't necessarily know. Yeah, I get it now. How come on the box it doesn't say rear? Uh, it's, it's just general brake pad boxes that they use. Oh, but... And then they just put the, the sticker on it. It has a part number. Oh, I see. But they are different. On every car? Front and, front and rear? Yes, are I don't know any vehicles that had the same brake pads on the front. How about Maybe tires? Some older cars, but... Tires? Uh, yeah, they're, they're usually the same on the front and rear, but they do have vehicles like the Camaro. Camaro uh, mm, some vehicles yeah. have wider tires in the rear. Mm, lots of meat. Yeah, I looked at them. I noticed the difference. I'm going to just apply a little bit more grease on these pins. I'm not, the old grease is not super burnt or crisp. If it was really uh, nasty, then you would drop those back in. See, this one's a little crusty. I like that out. If you were like going really crazy with this, you would take uh, the boot off and take a wire brush and clean out that hole. But in this case, we're just cleaning the crud off of this. But, you know, if you're going race car status, you'd clean those bores out completely. You don't want to apply too much of this either because then you can actually, um, if you get too much grease behind there when the heat builds up, it can cause the, the pin to push out and then lock the pads up. We got these grooves nice and cleaned up, ready to drop our hardware in. But before that, I like to also take a dab of this since we're down to the bare metal there. And either this or any sees is fine too. Anything, just throw it on here. Uh, two things, a noise dampener to prevent vibrations between the brake pad and also just to prevent uh, corrosion, premature corrosion underneath rust jacking. So on the hardware, we can now drop this in. Uh, it is, goes, th this would be wrong. It goes uh, in like, that, I, I guess the best thing to tell you is just put it the way it came out, but well, not really, because really, somebody could have put it in wrong. Goes it goes in like that. So now I'm putting a little blue Loctite on the caliper bolts. Just like that, a little dab will do you. How come one side needed brakes more than the other? 
Uh, probably the pins are a little tighter on that side. Or again, the rust jacking underneath the pad, like I was Depends telling. Depends these? Yeah, or, or if the rust jacking happens and locks a pad in. So uh, also on these, you know, I'm using nickel anti-seize, a little overkill, but little, little lube across these um, stainless shims. Some people don't like anti-seize. I do because as it once it dries up, it, it leaves like a, a powder, that nickel, nickel aluminum powder, and it allows the pads to slide freely. Essentially what you want, before you can put this all back together, you want to make sure that, well, hey, you don't want to get grease on your pads. You want to be able to slide your pad in here. I need really tight shims. There we go. And you see how I can slide it easily by hand? That's what you want. Oh my gosh, everybody got the anti-seize on the brake pad. He's fired. And now we're just putting a little smear of some disc brake quiet on here. This stuff will dry to be kind of tacky and help reduce noise in the future. I actually usually usually don't use this kind. I don't know if I'm putting on a little, a little too much or not, but we'll see. I was sitting over in my arsenal of stuff. Usually I use this spray. And some people don't like this, uh, this stuff at all, you know? Some people say put them on if it has the dampener shims. Put them on with that. That's it. There, there is a torque spec for these, but you know, we got Loctite on there and we're just, uh, once you do it long enough, you just go good and tight. That's fine. Perfect. Usually th this little squealer should be on the uh, side with the rotors coming in. What's that called? The leading side. So I'm gonna make sure not to get grease all over it from your glove. But just hammer on in there. If you have to hit it in with a hammer, then something's wrong. If the piston had heavy corrosion on it or the caliper bracket, you'd clean that off. This one looks okay. The bolts, we're gonna again go factory on these. Put a dab of blue Loctite on each of them. Factory bolts usually have that. Well, it depends on what make and model, but some of them do. Oh, yeah, they got the same thread pitch. Sometimes you gotta watch the pins. Could got one aftermarket pin, it might have a different thread pitch. Mm -hmm. Now, if this pin was spinning when you tightened it down, you'd put a wrench on the pin or hold it with uh, adjustable. But, see how that one spun? Yeah. Not good. So, you take the wrench. There we go. Tight. Good. All right. So, this side is done. So, I'm just going to hit each one with a little uh, shot of this multi-lube spray. Uh, yeah. Do you want to put this wheel on? I don't want to put it on because I want to use that as a guide. I'm going to do it when I'm done. Since you move pretty fast. All right. We're done then. All right. I'll leave you to your own. Thanks. No questions, right? I might have to rewatch this video. I'll go in real quick and edit it and rewatch it. I mean, it's just doing a pad slap. That's it. So pad slap, making sure you're cleaning those grooves out real good and, and yeah. you're good to go. Just a pad slap. Pad slap. He we, makes it sound I so think, simple. I forget if I mentioned, but it wouldn't be a bad idea to pull the rotor off so we could check the drum brake parking brakes in there but don't do more than you need to remember people i'm all alone in the new garage chris has left me to my own devices i am stalling i'll be honest i'm taking a moment here to uh, evaluate how i got myself into this position <laughs> Seems easy to him, intimidating to me. This is one where I'm not gonna be, uh, she's doing it wrong. This is gonna be, I gotta do it right. And I'm gonna have Chris come and check my work because I have very precious cargo going back in that Jeep. But, I'm 
I'm gonna get to it. Ah, let's do it. I have no idea. Finally ready to get started. I don't know why I'm so nervous about this one, but I am. First thing, going to remove the caliper. Two bolts here to start. Ready, tidy, lefty, Lucy. No, I was supposed to crack them off first, right? Okay. What is this? Those inside. Oh my gosh. This is too little, isn't it? and I need safety glasses. Tidy, tidy, lefty, Lucy. Tidy, tidy, lefty, Lucy. This is tidy. Lucy, goosey. Well, that's a horse of a different color. I'm gonna get a bigger. No. No. This is. Gonna have to start it. Chris, question tally, and we're at one. He told me I can use this. He said just to uh, make sure that uh, he said I can use this. So let's try this again. That's exciting. Hey, hey. <laughs> Got it. Yay. Yay. a surgeon and I have removed my first caliper now we'll open the peritoneal cavity <laughs> yay how does it look so there's a little piston in there 
Little baby piston. Can you see it? Why am I so excited? I don't know, but I am. Next, we remove, and these should just come right out. Do I need to pry them from the boot? How did he get these out? I would honestly go back and watch the video that I took, but it's on the GoPro and we're using that right now. Probably should put a mouth guard in. Is this just, oh yeah, there it is, got it. Okay. One and two. Two. I've got two more bolts back here. What size are they? <laughs> We're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. You almost done then? Yeah, I'm done. Know. Three hours, right? Five minutes. Um. This is the wrong size socket. It's all different sizes. They're all different sizes. I know that. Never mind. We'll just twist it off of my fingers. One or the other. snap a photo of this so I remember precisely how it came apart now you guys might not understand this because um, you might be thinking oh well you just watched Chris do it but I was also holding the camera and he moves really fast and sometimes without even knowing how fast he's going and I have so many questions even though I saw him do it like 20 minutes ago, I still can't remember all of it. But once you do it yourself, then it's a lot easier to remember, obviously. I mean, that's how I learn. Now, there's the squealer. So that goes on the, the inside. They're all the same, right? No. Oh, okay. There's different side, up and down. Yes, there are. They are different. Whoa! Come on. 
Hm, das ist ja gut. Mate. Is one of these wrong? playing tricks on me, but I've got it figured out. Yeah, everything looks a-okay. They're flying here? So better look at the old ones. No doubt about it. She needed rear brakes, at least on that side. Look how much more meat is on the passenger side rear. when you take a glove off like uh is that just me that that happens to all the time or now time for some gobbledygook Mechanics with big fingers do this kind of stuff. <laughs> Makes you wonder. It's a pretty delicate task. In there. Woo! Yeah, I can't imagine having gigantic fingers and doing this kind of work. I'm surprised more women don't get into this trade. Their tiny hands. Nice, very nice. Fresh, fresh, fresh. Next order of business, we're going to slide the brake pads into the caliper bracket. Chris was adamant that I didn't get any goo or anything on the, uh, he said it should slide in. Good. This is all that. And this is the inboard pad and then the squeal. Yeah, I thought that was this. This is the inside? No, that's the outside. Oh, okay. Oops. Yeah, they go on after? I mean, generally, yeah. After what? It's installed? After the bracket's on, yeah. forgot about the Chris question counterclock. We're probably at like 12, 13, 14, 15 by now. Ding, 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 ding. I'm not sure. But um, I just asked him again, what goo I'm supposed to put on the pins. And he told me the same goo I've been using on the bottom of the brackets. So I'll wipe these off and uh, goo them up. Goo also has a name, it's called Caliper Lube. Would you believe before today, I didn't know what a caliper was? Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. He said not too much. Light coating. Light coating, that looks pretty light. Time for reassembly. Where is our caliper bracket? Did I bring it over yet? No. First, also putting a little bit of lube, a little bit, just a little bit on the bolts. He said just a little splash. One, two, three, and four. How many 
your lips to the tip to get to the center of a Tootsie Pop. The world may never know. Okay, 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 okay. I need air. Boot was on the inside, right? Yes, 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 yes. Tight working quarters in here, huh? I can't see without his glasses. We got one. Guys, wanna hear a song? We wanna hear. Bum 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 bum. Stars shining bright above you. Dun 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 dun. Oh, this isn't a microphone. <laughs> All right, righty tidy. I got it. I got it this time. Got it. Got it. Got it. Let's go, righty. Now we talk. I don't want to over tighten it, so I'm going to let Chris check that when he comes in. Next order of business is. What comes next? What comes next? Now we put the brake pads in, right? Right? Yes. Yes, there's only one way they can go. Squealer goes on the inside, like he said. <laughs> Start her off here. Please fit, please fit, please. I'm gonna take my glove off. Hmm. Oh, oh! <gasps> Oops, doing it for Hannah. Oh, no. You get back in there. Talking to myself helps the process. Actually, it's necessary. It is easy, right? I'm the problem. Why do I feel like the clock is ticking down? I think I have a little bit of time. I can relax. Like, I'm not deactivating a bomb or anything. I'm doing a brake job. Like a rock. What is that? This must be easier than it seems. No goo on the other side, he said. Don't get any goo on the other side. Ah, and we're in. Woo! Yeah! Yeah, baby! Woo! Oh, baby, let the good times roll. Come on, baby, let the good times roll. She's gonna be rolling in style. I say that all the time. She's gonna be breaking in style. After Chris checks it, of course. And we'll go on the test ride together first, because we don't want anything happening to our wonderful Hannah. Hannah Montana, who we just got back from Montana with. All right, squealer on the inside. Yeah, yeah. See if I can get you a better angle of this. It's very difficult to do both, you know? I couldn't imagine having a film crew. That must be lovely. <laughs> ah. <laughs> How many times does one hit their head when they're working on cars? All right, everybody watch out. She's coming in. Light, camera, brake pad. No film crew. <laughs> oh yeah. All right, I got an idea. Put you down. Put this on my head. I don't know why I'm talking like that. I'm a grown up. Sometimes. When I have to pay bills, anyway. Here we go. Here we go again.
Oh yeah, he gooed that up too. That'll be in my hair. That's fine. Go everywhere. Go everywhere. Shadows everywhere. Okay, new plan. What's that look like? Can you see? Huh? No. How about here? That's gonna have to do, kids. That's gonna have to do. Because, uh, Because, uh, the bomb's about to detonate. All right, I stay back here and then you can see. Don't worry about me. There. Once was a girl. She did her friend's breaks because she loved her so much. There once was a girl. Why does this not feel right? No, it is, it's right. In. Come on, you. Come on, you. Get in there! I know you fit, your sister fit on the other side. Don't be a heifer. Kidding me. Get in there, girl. I don't like you. Oh! Come on. In the top, in the top. In. In, in. Come on. Don't be, don't be stubborn, you. I see it's gonna fit, it's gonna fit. Alright, these glasses are killing me. I give it a little love tap. Little love tap. I hold you up here. I tap you down here. <laughs> I can't imagine rolling around on the ground doing this. I love this. I love this so much. I love it. I just love being a mechanic. You guys need to tip your mechanics. Tip your mechanics, y'all. Can I just, like, will it in? <laughs> what do I have behind me? I need a kid to hold a flashlight, honestly. That's what I need. Wait a minute. I can't drop it too high or Chris will be upset about his concrete. But that was the equivalent of a mic drop. <sighs> Let's put the caliper back on. Will it fit? Oh, yeah.
Ninja. Boot. Let's not damage the boot. One boot. Two boot. Yeah! She's in. Now for the pins. Is this where you came from? Why? You fit up here? Hmm. No. That is not where you came from. Okay. Got it. You came from here. <sighs> okay, I got it. That's more like it. That looks correct. Yay! Yay! <laughs> oh, how many yays to tell you guys how happy I am? Two or three? Yay! That one. Oh, there we go. Good and snug. Let's go get inspected! All right, I got the inspector here. You guys, uh, hopefully I pass. What you got? Where's the light at? Right here. I I mean, there's not really much you could mess up, so... Sure uh, there is. Yeah, all well, the clips are in the right spot. Bolts are tight, right? Maybe you could... Lock tight on all of them. Right? No. No, I put lube on them. You lube the bolt? What did you lube? Remember the blue Loctite? Shoot. You did the opposite. That's okay. We'll just take them out, clean them. I mean, just to satisfy the viewers. I'm sure they all, they're good and tight and they'd be fine anyway, but uh, let's pop those bolts out and we'll... What did you put lube on? I lubed these pins. Inside. You didn't lube those? Yeah, I did. You lubed the threads of I the put, bolts? I uh, put blaster on. I put blaster on the... Oh, that was these. I was talking about just hitting hitting these with a touch. Oh. Touch of uh, this. Let me take this away from you. Crowd. Uh, mm, that out. smells good. So I have to... Okay, I'll take them out. I mean, it would be fine, I'm sure, but you literally did the opposite of uh, what we did on the other side. We put Loctite so that- I just won't... remembered you put blaster Chris on- Fix would be very Stop upset. it, <laughs> I'm learning. I remembered you put blaster on- The studs. The, the reds, the studs. and there were no other threads around. I figured it was those. Yeah, it's funny how that works, you know? Some threads get Loctite, some threads get uh, lubricant. It doesn't really make a lot of sense sometimes. But these frequently come on and off, so you want to keep these a touch of lube. Okay. Those we don't ever want coming off by mistake. All right, so it's it's an easy fix. So I yeah. take them out, I wipe them down, and wipe then I them put... down. Use some some uh, some brake clean on them. Wear gloves, and uh, yeah, just just get the lube off them, dry them off, and and put uh, a smear of Loctite on there. Torque them back down. What do you say? Oopsie poopsie. <sighs> That was a fail. Didn't think we were gonna have to go back to Lefty Lucy, but are you surprised? Because it could have been worse. until someone uses lube instead of Loctite. Where do you go? You go here. Ah, no. Let's try the top one. 
Oh my. Please, Jen, just stop. This is like humiliating right now. Oh my God. Please don't tell anyone I did that. I couldn't even fake this if I wanted to. Gus, get out of here. Gus, can you bring me a wrench or something? Can you bring me a wrench? Stars shining bright above you. Night breezes seem to whisper, I love you. Birds singing in the sycamore tree. Dream a little dream of me. Say nighty night and kiss me. Just hold me tight and tell me you'll miss me. While I'm alone and blue as can be. Dream a little dream of me. Dawn, dear, just saying this. Sweet dreams till sunbeams find you. Sweet dreams that leave all worries behind you. But in your dreams, whatever they be, dream a little dream of me. Just trying to distract you guys from my mistakes. This one can be called, she's making mistakes. That looks more like it. Oh, poor Hannah. She's a good sport for letting me try this. I think, uh, I think I did it right that time. You call the inspector. Huh? Gus, what you got there? Where'd you get that? <laughs> Gus says it's playtime. I don't think you're allowed in this garage anymore. What you got? Yeah, uh, looks good. Let me see. Let me put some Loctite on those. Get these all looped up. Yeah, looks great. Can you check the bolts? Yes. You're joking, right? No, what? 
It's not even tight. I know, I didn't go tight because I wanted you to... Oh, okay. I was going to no, say... No, no, I, I legitimately left them like less okay, tight. Okay, that's fine. All right, well, let's get the deeper socket then so we can get around the caliper. I even said that to them. Okay, right? yeah, yeah, yeah. No, that's good. Good I was afraid to over tighten. I'm not used yeah. to your tools and all that. I agree. I need tools. No. Yeah, again, there's a torch spec on these two. My arm is calibrated. <laughs> How do you buy that tool? Years. Now, what would be funny is if the bolt snapped as I said that. <laughs> How about these little guys? I put them on pretty tight with that little guy, but. Yeah, it feels good. Cool. Okay. Excellent. Nice work. So. Pass. Pass. It's a hard pass. Now, time for the tires? Yep, I'll throw this one on. All right. Oh, he's strong like bulls. <laughs> it's uh, a little bit lower this list than what I'd like. All right, now I get to watch you struggle over there. Let's see. Oh, we got to go find her a bug nut, too. Bug nut. That's it. I used to. The guy up. A nug lot? No, this guy <laughs> I used to work with. He had a little bit of an accent. Vietnamese. What do you call it? Hug nut. <laughs> Awkward squats seems natural. Nope, chicken. I will. Yes, sir. I've got it. Stubborn like an ox. Woo! No, the only reason I was saying that is because you had your hands like this, and if you get pinched between the, the sort of like it slips. I let her do what she wants, but when I'm around, it's it's hard to not say be careful because yes okay so do you want to check for the let's look for a leak? Leak. oh yeah yeah we noticed it she has a nail. nail she's got a nail in the tire yeah let's, let's the rest of these on first yeah. was it on this side okay there it is where's the nail right it's leaking so oh, we're gonna yeah. leave. We're gonna leave it alone for now. And she probably has warranty on these because she got them at, at the store that I used to work at that we won't disclose the name of. Wait, over that too. So somewhere around here, I'm just newly reorganized. Somewhere here it says uh, seashells. Hug knot. Oh, that's it. Verify, I mean, I could just go walk over there and <laughs> screw it on. This that stuff. requires a lot of effort. Wow, that's straight to me, Steph. That's it. We had the part in stock. I may have spent countless hours organizing all that stuff over the years and keeping it, but just saved yourself 20 minutes and not having to go to the parts store. Can't beat that. Lots of organization in this garage, and he is still working on it. All right, now we're gonna hand torque this. Take a walk around, make sure everything's clear. I've seen people put lifts down on top of oil caddies at work. And All clear. <laughs> Wait, so, which is the big one? The one that's bigger. Pretty, pretty uh, self-explanatory. Last and final step before a test drive and brandishing the brakes. We're gonna just uh, clean off this cap and top off the reservoir since we had pushed some of the fluid out. That way I could use a brake flush. But maybe we'll do some more maintenance in the future. Well, he stopped, so it looks like the brakes are working. So far, so good. 
we had to pull off because there's a pretty significant brake squeal. Chris has me running up the parking lot trying to figure out if it's the rears or the fronts because he thinks it's the fronts. Yeah. Yeah, it's the front brake. All Go right. Ahead. Oh yeah. The weird thing is we didn't hear, I was worried because we didn't hear any brake noise when we drove it over there earlier. So I was for sure it was us pad slapping the rear, but it's all in the front. Yeah, all you're right. right. Let's drop this cookie off. Okay. <laughs> fix that, we'll do it hard. <laughs> Ain't my problem. Well, I want to say I'm relieved because it wasn't anything I did. Now buckle up, baby. Yes, sir. Safety first. Yeah, we're very relieved because now we don't have to go you know, redo the brakes, which will take another seven hours of gin. <laughs> there, it's, they're I'm squealing not relieved so bad, her, they know. did not squeal at all for me. Like do we want to double check that side? See yes. out there. Go ahead. It sounds like it's coming from yeah, right here. so bad well you know what else it could be happening what i laid on the brakes a couple times relatively hard to brandish you know breaking the the new pads to the old rotors that we didn't resurface or anything and so that might have made her front brakes wheel a little bit more existent oh look at the sunset so just to double check that does that mean she needs new front brakes yeah, she probably does. We didn't really do a full brake inspection, but they did at the store where she was, so I kind of just took their word. Needed rears, I mean, the fronts. All right, then. If she wants to do your front brakes... We'll yeah. do it after the trip. Yeah, well... Now that I know how to do brakes. Shoot. <laughs> I think you're doing some more breaks in the near future. <laughs> All right.
always thought it was fine to have it of my own. That'd be cute. Yeah, no, I really, that's always what I thought the words were. Find a Hannah of my own. I'm like, I got one. Yeah. <laughs> that's cute.